as we discuss natural user interface, NUI, and the advent of pervasive computing. With me in studio are professors at the Hassel Plattner Institute in Germany, Pat Bowdish, and the director here at Microsoft Research Connections in Redmond, Stuart Tansley, also joining us via Skype, a researcher at Microsoft Research UK Lab, Sharam Isbradi. There he is. Do we have you? Are you there? I'm here, yes. Sharam's there. I can't hear him, but I can tell he's there. Let's start right here, Stuart. I want to start with you asking a simple question, easy for me to say. What is NUI? What does NUI mean? Because there, I know, I know what it is, but there might be people who don't know what NUI is. So give us the skinny. Well, NUI, first of all, is really exciting to be with. So it's one of the most exciting research areas to be working in today. We're already seeing products in the marketplace, yeah. but we're going to be talking about research today. And, and NUI brings a more, more natural, more intuitive way of interacting with computers in a way that, that's helping to bring new sensing technology together with new powerful software, together with new expectations that users have of their computer systems. So uh, we'll be seeing how NUI is illustrated through some of the researchers talking today. Well, we're excited. Uh, Shram is uh, joining us via Skype. Uh, are, you, are you there, Shram? I am. I there he you. is. Can there he is. We're doing well, and we can hear you. I want to uh, hit you up next. Do you have uh, something to add to that? We're talking about NUI, and we're, we're going to un unravel all of this today. Yeah, I mean, as, as Stuart says, uh, natural user interfaces are a very interesting, exciting area of research. Um, it's a little bit of an overloaded term. It means a lot of different things for, to different uh, researchers. Some people working on multi-touch interface would say that's a, a great example of a natural user inter interface where you can directly interact through touch gestures with uh, digital content. Um, others would say the Connect camera is a great example of a natural user interface. Um, I actually think natural user interaction means bringing uh, computing into a domain where it becomes a lot more intuitive and easy to interact with the digital uh, domain. And um, I think ultimately it's about bringing together and mashing together these different modalities of interaction, whether it's gestures, whether it's touch, whether it's speech, um, and making computers interact with us as if you know, as if we're interacting with another human being. But it's more than just creating the next generation, the next version of Connect, right? Yes, certainly. Yeah, I think I, th I think what Connect has demonstrated is how the whole body can be used as an input device, and that is a really exciting, uh, you know, set of technologies that are associated with that. But I think that's just the beginning. Um, I think, as I said. Natural user interfaces are about bringing together lots of different modalities of interaction. It might even be speech-based, it might be gesture-based. And let's not actually forget the keyboard and mouse as well. You know, this, mm -hmm. this, these kind of hybrid approaches are also, also interesting. Well, it's a pretty impressive tagline, bridging the physical and virtual worlds. Uh, it's, it's a powerful slogan. I mean, it, it's hard to sort of explain what that means, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the work that um, that we're doing at Microsoft and is happening within the, the, the research world, um, especially in human computer interaction is about bridging the, the physical and the digital, but actually it, it is a larger term. It's a broader term. I think it relates to a lot of different areas, whether it's robotics, whether it's computer vision, computer graphics, for example, uh, these are all areas that really are about bringing together the real and the, and, and the virtual worlds. And um, I think ultimately that's where the magic lies, when the, the, the virtual behaves more like the physical and when the, the real uh, captures uh, the, the capabilities of the virtual, that's where, that, that's an inter interesting intersection, I believe. Now, Pat, let's put you in the hot seat. How do you explain the project and how it sort of fits into bridging the physical and the virtual world? So, um, yeah, we've been working on a project called Multito. Um, which was initially just a kind of working title. Um, what we're doing is we're taking the idea of multi-touch and extending it to an entire room. So as Sharam was pointing out, the idea of natural user interfaces means that we want to, we want to bring, oh, okay, yeah, here's a bit of a video. Wow, okay. Yeah, you can see, yeah, here's some actually early footage so of, the, actually of the project. It's actually footprints. <laughs> yeah, so it's, if you think about it, it's just in, in, a, in a wider sense, a bit like a Microsoft Surface, people are walking across it. We identify people based on their shoe prints. Um, um, okay, yeah, here's some footage. Um, here you can play some video games on it. I think this was uh, with a lot of, involves a lot of students actually, so this was a big hit. 
Um, I think interesting elements from the from the from the system are that we kind of try to capture the the simplicity of multi-touch, which is a very reduced and simple way of doing computer vision, and we try to extract three D information from it. So normally, when you have you know like the touch screen device you have there in front of you. Mm -hmm. Um, we reconstruct the position of the fingers, but it's not really necessary beyond the position of the touch. But the concept itself, when applied to an entire room, actually allows us to uh, reconstruct not just what touches the surface, but also things that happen above the surface. So mm -hmm. we can, for example, find out um, where people are, in what direction they're leaning, uh, if they're carrying any objects and so on. So wow. we're doing some interesting reconstruction there. Um, we think this could be interesting in the longer sense uh, um, for uh, things like assisted living, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we're using a pretty complex prototype right now. We actually have two rooms on top of each other with 1.2 tons of glass in between that people walk on. It's eight square meters large. So it's a pretty big wow. installation. But we think, we think of this more as a placeholder technology as you know, interactive pressure sensor foil kind of uh, evolves that you know, one day we might, um, you know, when you roll out a new uh, carpet, for example, this might just be the sensor that essentially uh, covers all the things happening in your home. And we are writing the algorithms today that, that cover you know, the, um, the sensors and extract the information that we need for that. This is fascinating stuff because you know, as a child, we're led to believe through the movies and everything that the ultimate, the end goal is going to be fingerprint. You're going to be able to put your fingerprint on something and it's going to know who you are. It sort of evolved beyond that to the point where, oh, I never thought about my, my footprint, that I could just walk into a room and things can happen. Like you said, there's so many applications that aren't obvious, like assisted living and, and things like that. So in order to put this into a, like a big scale, like a room, I mean, you just have, have a ton of cameras and a ton of microphones. Well, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of the you traditional. You about the prototype was pretty. Yeah, yeah. So, well, so I think the traditional approach is, is to use cameras. And when you think about it, I mean, that's exactly what happens, the transition from natural user interfaces, uh, from, sorry, from like traditional, you know, graphical user interface to NUI, is that cameras play a much bigger role, or at least sensors that generate that type of data. In the, you know, essentially starting in the 60s, when like Doug Engelbart invented the mouse, you know, recently we had the anniversary, we, we got very little input about users, but that little input we had was very reliable, right? You knew there was, you know, Essentially, from a computer's perspective, a user was a moving coordinate across. Right. Right. And, um, and today that's changing. The same way we perceive the computer as being a high resolution image, like through graphics, computers start perceiving us kind of in a similar way, also as, you know, as video, if you will. And so the algorithms are getting really interesting for getting that information out that we want. And as a matter of fact, we have another project that's not quite ready to be shown where we actually look at extracting fingerprints from from um, tablet computers and multi-touch systems to identify people. So I'm very excited about that. So. Yeah, well, I mean, as we look forward to where, you know, Nui is headed, I mean, uh, I, I'm seeing even people on Twitter, which, by the way, you can tweet us at any time during this summit, hashtag FACSUM, F-A-C-S-U-M-M. -M. You can post questions. A lot of people joking about that this is another example of the robot takeover. They've got us right where they want us. Now they'll know where we are, what we're holding, which way we're leaning. We're not training how, they, are they we? They found us out, Pat. They found us out. Who are you guys working for, really? That's what we <laughs> want to know. No, is this where you see uh, Nui heading? I mean, this is very impressive. Of course it is. No, no. <laughs> what, what, the, the, um, the amazing thing about, about Nui is it's such a, a rich area. Every time you talk about a particular type of sensing technology or a particular modality of user interface, a particular user context, it's always just slices on what the overall field is about. I think Sharam spoke very, very, very nicely to, to, to the, the synthesis, synthesis and the combination of these things really are, are showing the, the, the richness of this, this area, the amazing amount of work that there is to do in, in of research. Um, we're only showing some, some narrow examples, mm -hmm. but sure, ultimately, robot takeover. That's where right. we're going. Perfect. All right. Well, as long as we see it coming, that's the I, we didn't Don't say we didn't told you. Uh, Shram uh, joining us, uh, by the way, via Skype. And you want to weigh in? Where do you see things headed with Nui, Shram? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I guess you know one of the one of the kind of motivations for us is to start thinking about uh, smart spaces and smart rooms where we can combine a variety of different sensors. We can not only combine rich input sensing, but rich um, output. Uh, as well through projection or new types of display technologies. And the coupling of input and output uh, is a really ri rich um, area of invest investigation, I think, in, uh, in future new work. You know, for example, with the, sorry? No, go ahead. Uh, so with the Connect, for example, 
you know, ultimately the, the output side of things is still experienced through your TV screen. Uh, and so what's next in terms of display technologies is, is an interesting question. A lot of the new e-based research is focused on input and combining it with output is, is an interesting area. I, I know uh, a lot of this we're, we're, we're tiptoeing into. We don't want to reveal too much, but Sharam, do you have any other new e-based uh, projects in the pipeline you can talk about? So, yeah, I mean, uh, the one that really springs to mind is a complement to the work that Patrick was uh, was was describing. So, so Pat's work is looking at sensing interactions in a room uh, using this novel bottom-up approach, for want of a better term, uh, where he has cameras looking underneath a uh, an, an augmented floor. Um, we have uh, what Pat described as a more traditional approach, where we have multiple cameras in a room, connect cameras. Um, where we can actually get a 360 image of all the interactions happening in the room. We can track objects, we can track users, and we have a number of different uh, projection technologies and tablet technologies which can be tracked to reveal uh, aspects of the, the, the virtual within the physical uh, space. Uh, so that's a, that's a really interesting uh, complement to, to Pat's work, and that's uh, that's where we're where we're actually collaborating uh, directly on. Um, so that's one project. And then uh, another project that we've uh, invested a lot of time in is a project called Connect Fusion. Um, mm -hmm. Some of you may have heard of this. Um, so the idea here is to sort of almost reverse the setup of the the typical Connect, which typically sits above your TV screen, and you're gesturing at the at the at the Connect camera. Instead, why don't we grab the Connect camera, hold it in our hands? and rapidly scan in the environment around us. And actually one of the areas that, that, that we're particularly interested in is using these kinds of technologies for augmented reality, where the virtual can be overlaid onto the, onto the physical and experienced in, in, in rich ways. So those are the main, main projects that we're, we're focusing on. Yeah, I got to say, Connect Fusion is one of the coolest names. And I wasn't sure when I first heard the term <laughs> if it was a new project or if it was a deodorant. They, they sort of all try to use those same words, right? But uh, it's this is like really exciting stuff. And uh, a lot of people obviously are, are trying to figure out what's next. Where's this all going? People weighing in online on Twitter. You can tweet us throughout the summit as well. Just use the hashtag FACSUM, F-A-C-S-U-M-M. -M. We'll see your tweets. You want to post questions or just comments. Somebody just tweeted and says, so I guess I won't be interacting uh, using my mouse and keyboard for input anymore, finally breaking the 40-year-old paradigm. So people are saying, is that stuff out? Should I go huck it? Should I just throw it away? No, on the contrary, as, as Pat said, yeah. uh, it may be that these, a lot of these technologies are complementary to what we already have. Right. Um, a lot of what, what Nui is about is about personalizing the experience. You may, you may use existing contemporary user interfaces in a particular context, but there are other times where, when using other, other modalities might be more relevant. So making the user experience personal, mm -hmm. adaptive, um, help, helping the computer system try to anticipate the user needs, this is what, what Nui is encompassing. Mm -hmm. What from you guys with you know, your boots on the ground, developing this stuff, seeing it kind of unfold, what are the biggest challenges? What are the biggest roadblocks? I mean, you're starting to see some of the some of the fruits of the labor here, but what, what do you think are the biggest challenges in, in seeing this evolve? Well, literally, uh, Pat, Pat, you have boots on the ground, right? You have boots <laughs> on the surface. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I think algorithmically, it's it's a it's yeah. an interesting challenge. The, I think, uh, I think input devices for a long time were known to be like simple and reliable. Right now, and I think uh, techniques like computer vision and machine learning, which were always kind of adjacent to human computer interaction mm -hmm. are now kind of being you know um, really integrated into human computer interaction starting with the fact that like you know we teach our undergrad students you know early on how to uh, familiarize themselves with these with these technologies and I think um, so I think in like 10 years in the future that the that the uh, that students and researchers who will work in this in this area will have a very different skill set from what they have mm -hmm. today as a result of Nui um, a, a very different way of um, of processing this type of input in order to learn more about users and kind of conclude more, you know, there's more, there's there's more data and it takes more um, complicated algorithms to kind of extract what users are actually intending to do. Now, obviously, at this point, there you're working between some sort of uh, you know kind of fun uses, but the practical. Is there any concerns? Uh, I'm just wondering in, in you know. Uh, not so much privacy, but security threats. You know, I mean, I know the ideas of people talking about the thumbprint technology and, and even people exploring chips and all of that. And then it became, well, wait, so if I get your thumbprint or if I get that chip out of his thumb, then I can open his house and all that. I mean, does any of that even come into this? You know, if I swipe your shoes, 
I can just yeah. walk into your house, right? And it thinks it's you. Yeah, so I mean, I think the for shoe prints, obviously, we don't go as far. We're thinking right. of, of groups, you know, that kind of, you know, 50 people living in a, in a house. Uh, we would not use this for security and authentication. That said, the project we're doing right now, where we're building multi surfaces, actually, is using the fingerprint. And I think your concern is actually well taken. Uh, not so much, I think there have been several attempts to kind of go forward with biometrics. And I mean, the risky thing is if you ever have a key card system that gets mm -hmm. compromised, well, you have to withdraw the whole key card system. If your um, biometric data ever gets compromised, you have to wait a generation, mm -hmm. right? You have to wait 50 years before you can try again. So obviously, uh, this is an interesting challenge to get that right. And for that matter, you know, I mean, you know, I recently had my email hacked, which was a whole lot of fun to get resolved. I mean, could that even could that ever happen to where I mean, even if it's just to, to you know, I'm walking in my house and now all of a sudden music I don't like is playing. Wait a minute, who's who's reconfigured my profile here? I think at the end of the day, we, we are doing science here. We are doing research. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, these are very important questions, but the, the, the social impact and, and, and things like the security impact, privacy impact, and so on, on, on technology and within technology is, is, is always there in the back of minds. We're, we're in society as well. We, 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 mm -hmm. we use these technologies, so we're, we're conscious of it. And it's good that in, in IT today, these concerns are, are higher profile yeah. than they perhaps might, might would have done. But at the end of the day, we are doing research and, and exploring the boundaries of what we're, we're trying to do. It, it, the, the, these guys are trying to break through, uh, make breakthrough ideas, yeah. innovate. Um, it, it's, it's hard, and, and taking these things into account is important. It's there, but it's not a dominant factor mm -hmm. in constraining our thinking. We're just about out of time here, but uh, before we go, Sharam, I'll give you the first crack at it. Uh, final words on this cool kind of collaboration that's happening here. Yeah, so the collaboration with Pat we're really excited about. Um, we're calling it Surface Cubed. Um, there's a whole bunch of different uh, technical challenges, some of which uh, Pat mentioned. I guess the, you know, there's, in terms of the software challenges alone, um, you know, a lot of the work that we're doing is focusing around the camera, which is a really rich sensor, uh, especially, you know, when you start to think about depth cameras, um, you know, you, you, you even get richer data than the 2D data, and then it becomes a, a process of trying to infer from that rich signal what the user is user is doing, whether it's tracking the user, uh, detecting things like gestures, and trying to interpret those for uh, you know natural interactions. So that's a that's a really challenging area. But then there's the whole uh, device side of things. It's like how do we actually experience uh, this rich uh, world where the physical and the virtual are, are you know being being kind of mashed together in, in this interesting way. And there, I think we're just really scratching the surface, no pun intended, in terms of um, what could be done in terms of different di display technologies and, and different ways of uh, revealing these kind of hidden worlds to the, to the user. Pat, Sharam buttered you up properly there. Uh, what do you think, <laughs> parting words? This is ultimately, it's a very cool collaboration, some yeah. extraordinary technology being developed, but it, you know, it's good old fashioned teamwork. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So working with uh, with people at MSR Cambridge has been a fantastic experience. Shram, Steve Hodges, everyone on the team, um, and uh, I mean, including the fact that that for like I'm, I'm a comparatively recent uh, addition to the to the faculty uh, route, uh, being a, having been at Microsoft myself at, at some point in the past, and it was great to actually bring all the students out mm -hmm. and um, and get this collaboration going. So everyone's super excited about it, and. Uh, I think especially the, the perspective of us coming um, you know, from this kind of more surface-oriented uh, perspective and, and adding the, uh, the spatial component of the Connect experience that, that, that Shram's team has is really, really fruitful right now. And, um, and so right now, next steps will be uh, trying to do motion capture systems that combine these different types of mm -hmm. sensors. Um, because it turns out that the types of input we get from, from a Kinect-based system and the types of input we get from a surface-based system are quite different mm. uh, and make a wonderful addition together. So I'm very excited and, uh, and to move this forward together, Shram. Stuart, parting words? Well, it's a great privilege to be working this area with such wonderful researchers. Um, not only are we bridging the physical and virtual worlds, but we're, we're bridging the academic and industrial research worlds. So uh, I couldn't ask for a better, better uh, collaborators. Um, uh, it's, this is just one, one tiny piece of the entire field of Nui. We'll see a few more in the presentations coming up this afternoon. 
Um, Pat will be speaking there, and uh, we'll, 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 let's see some more. I look, look forward to, uh, to, to showing, showcasing some more later. Looking forward to it. Great stuff. Thank you to Stuart, Pat, and Sharam for this exciting preview into the future of pervasive computing. I'm excited about this idea of uh, ubiquitous computing and you know having devices understand what I need without my conscious input. Um, but can we make like the bathroom off limits? No sensors in the bathroom. That's that's just one. There are so many puns in this field. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Still to come here on day one of the 2012 Microsoft Research Faculty Summit: Technology and the Fight Against Human Trafficking and Internet Governance at the Crossroads. But first. For those of you who might have missed it, here is an encore of Eric Horvitz's summit opening keynote, Predictions, Decisions, and Intelligence in the Open World. Take a look. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.